Hey guys, welcome. So I am Catherine and this is Little Bits of Heaven Homestead. Tonight I am making goat milk soap. This is a special order from a friend of mine. She is actually a, a fellow YouTuber. You could find her here under Patty Politics. And she reached out to me and requested that I make a particular type of soap for her. Uh, she does have some skin sensitivities. I'm not exactly sure if it's for her or her family members, but I am happy to accommodate. So what she specifically requested is oatmeal and tea tree goat milk soap. So I'm putting together a small batch for her and I thought I would have you guys join me. So before I get started, I wanted to talk about basic safety uh, equipment. This is something that I want to talk about on every one of these videos. And I feel like I'm not doing the video itself justice if I don't bring this up. So you want to start with non-reactive pots and pans. Anything like glass or stainless steel is safe. You do not want to use things like tin or aluminum because you can have a chemical reaction with the lye. I, I believe they can do some off-gassing. Just uh, stay away from them. If you can find some stainless steel or glass at like local thrift stores or garage sales, all the better. Uh, you don't necessarily have to. It's not like the end-all be-all rule. Have separate soaping equipment, but I highly recommend that you don't mix your kitchens and feeding your family regular pots and pans with whatever you're using to soap. Just because you are using lye, it's super caustic. And in theory, it should no longer be lye. It would become soap itself, which is very safe. But just to err on the side of caution, I just have separate soaping equipment in general. So to protect your eyes, I am fond of my eyes. I wear my shooting glasses. There are better glasses for soaping that do a total seal to the face. I, I, for a while, was wearing those big, goofy science goggles that you would see in chemistry classes. I started uh, wearing these mostly out of vanity since I was doing these soaping videos because I walk around with that uh, imprint of the goggles for like an hour or two after I soaked, so, which isn't necessarily a problem since I'm here at home. But since I'm doing these videos, I figured it would be a little more attractive to wear something that doesn't imprint on my face. So. There is mixed reviews on wearing long sleeves versus not wearing long sleeves. I have splashed raw soap on myself. I have splashed lye solution on myself. It is not like this, uh, it's gonna eat through to clear to your bone within seconds. I have my sink right here. If I do happen to splash myself, I just walk over and rinse it off for several minutes. I am fairly, well, I'm definitely light skinned. I don't know that I would say that I'm sensitive skinned, but it does, it causes little red patches that are a little inflamed and itchy, but nothing like major, nothing scary. So if you are not attempting to soap because you are afraid of lye, do respect it. Do be aware that it is caustic. It is nothing to play with. It's a very serious chemical, but it's not like it's going to kill you the instant you come into contact with it. I do have kitchen, just the standard for washing dishes rubber gloves that I wear, or maybe they're latex, I'm not exactly sure, but it um, gives me a little added protection. So that is kind of the extent of my safety equipment. You do need some general equipment as far as being able to make soap. The most important thing that I would recommend you pick up is some sort of kitchen scale. Uh, soaping is a science. Whoop, dropped my glove. It's a, not only science, it's an exact chemistry. And so if you are just ballparking it, you could do some serious damage to not only your personal skin, but if you're giving it out as gifts or God forbid selling it and you're not using correct formulas, you could have some real issues. So it doesn't have to be anything crazy expensive. I picked this up off of Amazon. I do have this in our Amazon store. I do have a link for our Amazon store in the description. Uh, along with most of this equipment that you'll see me use, it's in our Amazon store. So if you're looking for it, these are the products that I recommend. I do try to be frugal. I am not super expensive on most all of my equipment. As I'm getting into soaping and it's becoming more and more of a real thing in my life, I am looking to upgrade some of my equipment. But at this point, I, I'm still using the relatively cheap stuff. So this is probably your most important tool when soaping. I do use an immersion blender. I have hand, uh, hand mixed so the soap with a spoon, and honestly, it didn't take too much longer than the immersion blender. 
We have tried several other methods of blending and been unsuccessful as far as getting our soap up to trace. So I'm sticking with the immersion blender and looking for better options. I have a friend who's been really researching for me, which I totally appreciate him. So uh, we may be upgrading our immersion blender at some point here soon. So I do have a latex spatula so that I do use regularly. And again, it is separate just for soaping. And then you're gonna need some sort of mold. I'm doing a relatively large batch. My husband made these molds for me. They're just out of uh, two by fours from broken down pallets. I line my mold with a uh, plastic wrap. Depending on what type of oil solution you use in your soaping, you may not want to use plastic wrap. My particular formula is relatively soft for several days, and so I, I don't have an issue getting the plastic wrap off of my raw soap because it takes several days to become hardened, and so I'm able to peel it out. If you're using like a uh, heavy on the coconut oil or a lard bar, they harden almost instantly. And so I would definitely not use a plastic wrap in that situation because you would never get your plastic wrap out. So it, part of soaping is learning the science of it. I would highly recommend playing with different uh, recipes. I have my recipe, if you guys are interested in it, listed in our Etsy store, which is also in the description. So and for just a few dollars, you can help support our homesteads and it's much appreciated if you do. I also occasionally list my soaps for sale in our Etsy store, which is in the description. So do look for those. I, I am not a regular soap maker. This is not a hardcore business for me. This is something I do out of love and when I have time. So they're not always in stock, but when I have them, I try and throw them in there for you guys. So aside from that, uh, I will give you a quick breakdown on the oils that I use and why, but first what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, and I pre-measured all this stuff, it's a little too much pressure to do it on camera and be sure to be exact because it is important to be exact. So I would highly recommend also running formulas through a soap calculator. I have uh, My favorite that I found online is soapcalc.net and it's going to give you your proper ratios of each oil. It's also gonna tell you how much lye and how much liquid, how much fragrance to add. So, and these are good things to know as you go forward in soaping, because as you learn your formulas, you can tweak them to what works best for you. So what's important here is you always, always, always add your lye to the liquid. Never add liquid to the lye. I, I have my, I use goat milk because milk tends to scald when it gets hot and there is an exothermic reaction here. This will heat up. And so this is actually gonna melt these cubes relatively quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this here. And you will see it takes maybe about five, 10 minutes or so to get this to the point. And I probably should have added that long before I started talking just so that uh, it was already doing this process. But since I use uh, goat milk, the sugars and the fats in the milk can scald if they get to a certain temperature. I think it's over 80 something degrees. Maybe it's higher than that. I, I tend to really work hard at preserving this really white cream color to my goat milk soaps. And I've noticed that if I soap above about 80 degrees, I start to get some browning. It'll want to do what's called gel phase, where it actually, it changes the entire look and texture of the bar. Um, gives it almost a translucent color where when I'm doing my soaps it stays really opaque and creamy white much like what you see here. So in order to preserve this and try to keep it as cold as possible I pre-freeze my milk. So what I do is I, I have goat milk uh, straight from the tap. I have goats outside that I go and milk and then I bring it in, I filter it and then I put it into ice cube trays which I have around here somewhere and then freeze them obviously and then I bag them so that I've got plenty of milk on hand and if you have goats in milk you know that you frequently it's like feast or famine you have an abundance of milk or you have nothing and so I try to take that into consideration and I keep I try to keep a handful of bags in my freezer at all times so what I'm going to do is go ahead and stir this lye solution and it's already starting to melt the surface here.
and what I'm waiting for is it to become completely melted. It doesn't, it can still be a little bit slushy, but I want a liquid solution to pour into my oils. So my preferred formula as far as soaping, and like I said, my, my recipe is in our Etsy store, so feel free to check that out in the description. Uh, but I use three different oils. I have experimented with different oils and I continue to do so just because I like playing with the science of it. But uh, my tried and true recipe that I really stick to is three oils. Oh, my hands stuck together. So three oils. Uh, I use olive oil is my predominant and heaviest oil. Uh, there's lots of reasons that I chose it. If you guys have probably heard of Castile soap, that is 100% olive oil. And all soap is is some sort of fat combined with a lye liquid solution. That's all soap is. And so you are in control of what those fats are. You can use things like lard, you can use, if you use 100% coconut oil, do be aware that it is very stripping on the skin. I do like coconut oil. That is the second oil that I use. And I use it specifically for its cleansing properties. So it does have some moisturizing properties, but most of my soaps really nourishing qualities come from not only the goat milk, but the olive oil. And coconut oil itself is really good at cleansing. So uh, there's some common misconceptions that it's really good for moisturizing, and it is to a point, but because its cleansing properties are so much stronger, it'll actually strip all your skin's natural oils. So that's why I combine it with other oils, specifically the olive oil, because olive oil is just fantastic for the skin. So the third oil that I use, and it's a, really it's a minimal oil in the soap recipe, but I use it specifically for its bubbliness, and that's castor oil. Castor oil will make beautiful big bubbles. And so that's part of what, if you run your recipes through a soaping calculator, it's also going to tell you things like cleanliness, moisturizing levels, uh, bubbliness, your INS number, as I don't know necessarily where to go with that, I just stay within range and make sure that I'm producing a safe soap because I think that's really important, especially when you're using some sort of chemical like lye, because if this is so caustic, it is so important to make sure that you're using enough oils so that your lye is fully incorporated, fully converted. The process is called saponification, and that is where the lye and the fats actually chemically change. Uh, in your finished soap, you should have no leftover either lye or olive, or uh, olive uh, oil. So because it, it's a chemical reaction and it becomes what we know as soap. So you can see my milk solution is almost ready. I do have some cubes floating around. So uh, my next process is I'm going to add this solution into my oils. And again, always, always, always add your lye solution into your liquids. Never your liquids into lye. As you can have... Um, it can bubble up like a volcano, start spitting at you. It's definitely always, always, always go lie into your liquids. So cannot stress that enough. So as long as you're using some basic safety, some common sense, there's nothing to be afraid of when you soap. Just respect the fact that you are working with something that can be damaging. As you wanna make sure you have a plan in place if you were to spill, like I, I would recommend if you are new to soaping and you are uncomfortable with this, maybe line your countertop with cardboard or newspaper. That way if you're just a little uncertain, unsure of yourself and you do a little splashing, a little spilling because it can ruin your surface. So, okay. So that is ready. And so I am gonna have to mix. It takes about three to four minutes mixing with the immersion blender. It's gonna be hard for me to talk, so you guys are just gonna to have to kind of hang out and watch. But what we're looking for is, it's the entire texture of this oil is gonna change. It's no, no longer gonna look like oil. It's gonna look like a combination of the milk and the oil, and it's gonna turn into like a pudding type consistency. And 
I prefer a, what's called medium trace. There's light trace, which is still pretty liquidy, medium trace, which is kind of like a pudding mix right as you put it into the refrigerator and it's starting to harden up just a bit. And then there's a thick trace where it's like solid like pudding and you have to actually scoop it out. I tried to work at medium trace just because I like to do little fancy swirls on the top of my soaps when I'm done. If, if my trace isn't thick enough, I'll actually pop it into the freezer and let it solidify for a few minutes before I come back and mess with the surface. But you'll see, I'll try to get it to a medium trace and that way you guys can see what it looks like. The hotter your oils are, the faster it's going to come to trace, so that's something to keep in mind. I do have mine, like I said, I try to keep my soap very cold, so I have, and you guys probably can't see, I have my pot inside a bowl with an ice bath. So I am going to go ahead and pour this over. I'm going to pour it over the edge of my immersion blender here. And then you want to burp your blender because you're trying to avoid incorporating uh, air into your soap. Uh, if you get little air bubbles in there, it'll show in your finished product. It'll look like little little air bubbles. So the less air you incorporate into this at this point, the more solid a bar you're going to end up with. So, oh, I always forget this part. I should have added the sugar and the salt into my lye mixture. For some reason, I always get distracted. So I'm going to go ahead and add this now. It's not necessarily a problem. Uh, this, both the sugar and the salt, help with making a harder bar and they've got some really great skin qualities. So I, I found that by adding it to it, I end up with a nicer bar. I'm gonna go ahead and try and talk to you guys as I blend. Hopefully you can hear me. So, all of these items that I've chosen to be additions to my soap, you can do without them. And it's been as I've been soaping over the years, I found that by tweaking my recipe and adding things like sugar and salt, that I really appreciate the end product. But I would suggest if you're um, just getting started, go as basic as possible and then tweak from there. So that way you know if your base recipe is a really nice hard bar in the first place or if adding sugar or adding salt would be of benefit to you. So if, if I were doing it from a fiscally minded end, adding sugar and salt is definitely a good option because the harder your bar, the longer it lasts. As far as soap sales, I really like giving my customers quality products that last. It would probably be to my benefit to not make as hard a bar because it does it last longer in comparison to most homemade soaps. I don't know if you guys have experienced that where homemade soaps, they get really soft really fast. Some things you can do to combat that is they sell these little plastic pads called soap savers. Water is the enemy of soap. So if your soap, like say you keep your soap in the shower and it never fully dries out, your soap isn't going to last as long as it would if you were to allow it to dry out daily. So um, take your soap out of your shower on the when you're done every day. That might help. Uh, keep it elevated so that it has an opportunity to uh, dry. Other things that I add and I'm getting to, as soon as this is at trace, I'm going to add my essential oils. I have a couple of favorites that I use in almost all my body care products, and that would be frankincense and rose hip essential oil. Uh, they're supposed to be really great for things like fine lines, eczema, uh, rosacea. I'm not making any medical claims, I just happen to really like them, and I do notice a difference if I don't use them. So, and then like I said, my friend Patty from Patty Politics specifically requested that this be an oatmeal and tea tree oil. So uh, once this gets to trace, and with cold process soap, which is what I'm doing here, there is a hot process soap, but a uh, cold process is less of an issue because you're not soaping at a hot temperature. But if your temperatures are too high and you add your essential oils, uh, 
they essentially evaporate and they're doing you no good. So do keep that in mind if you're soaping at high temperatures and wanting to add things like essential oils. It may be good for like the placebo effect, but depending on your temperature, you may not actually have any essential oils left in your product. That is one reason I choose to cold process. Uh, the other is obviously with my goat milk, I wanna keep it cold. So uh, difference between hot process and cold process, is, well, aside from the process itself, is hot process tends to be ready to go with a much shorter cure time. You're talking just like a couple days cure time where cold process is recommended to allow the bar to cure four to six weeks. I, I'm a big advocate of long cure times for soap just in general, regardless of the process, because the longer you wait, the more moisture will evaporate and you'll end up with a better quality bar. So the soap is getting close. You guys can see it's still pretty liquidy, but it no longer looks like oil and it probably looks a little more like my goat milk, which is exactly what I go for. Uh, but it's definitely starting to look a little pudding-ish. I don't run my mixer continuously. That really bothers my friend who's an electrician because he says it's not good for the motor. This whole setup bothers him greatly, which I appreciate because he's keeping me challenged. But uh, I found that if I let it rest and stir it by hand and then just run my mixer intermittently, that my soap I, I like the way it behaves characteristically. And you'll, as you get to soaping, you'll see, I, you'll play with it. You'll develop a process that's within your own comfort zone and feels right to you. And you'll learn what you're looking for and what you're not looking for. <laughs> consistency is starting to change and is thickening up. So another additive that I will put in when I do reach trace along with the essential oils is I think it's pronounced cowman clay. Uh, it will help anchor the essential oil fragrance. Uh, essential oils although they're super powerful their fragrance tends to dissipate in soaps relatively quickly where if you're using something like a synthetic fragrance that has been uh, it's been created specifically for the purpose of being put into soap for fragrance. Uh, things like essential oils, uh, they don't have the longevity and so you start losing the kind of that power packed fragrance. But this kaolin clay is supposed to help anchor it. also has all sorts of benefits to the skin. So think of things like bentonite clay and how it's recommended to clean pores. Same thing. So I, it's a totally different clay, but same principle. So. <laughs> recommend you make that your first step. I believe I referred to that earlier in the video, but I found myself at the time where my uh, soap comes to trace and I need to hustle and get it into the mold and I don't have my molds prepared 
and it's like this ah moment. So uh, you do want to make sure that you have that ready to go. So what I'm going to add right now is I'm going to go ahead and add the clay. I'm going to add my essential oils. And then in this situation, I am using tea tree oil as not only an essential oil for whatever benefits it has, and it's got a ton. It's, it's antibacterial, antimicrobial. It's a uh, supposed to be anti-parasitic. I know I hear people talk about like if your kids have lice, put it in their hair. I'm not saying that it actually does any of this stuff, but it's reported to have all sorts of benefits. So this one will, I did more than I would normally do if I were using it just for its essential oil properties, since I am using it as a fragrance as well. So that's getting poured in there. And then at this point too, I'm going to go ahead and add, what I did was I put whole oats into a clean coffee blender. So in the soap itself, you don't necessarily need it to be really, a, you're not looking for something abrasive. Uh, what this is being used for is its oils and its really calming and nourishing properties to the skin. So I'm not using this as like an exfoliant bar. If I were, I would use my oats a little bit rougher. So I wouldn't do as, as coarse or as fine a blend, I would leave it coarser. But since I'm using this for its nourishing and skin healing and moisturizing properties, I went to a pretty fine powder. And then just for decoration, because I'm into beautiful bars, because that's the whole point of me making them, is to do something I enjoy and I find beautiful, I'm gonna sprinkle some oats on the top just for decoration, not for any other purpose. And I'll go minimal on that because anything you use to decorate your soap tends to not get actually used as soap and it goes down your drain. So do keep that in mind as you're getting fancy schmancy doing your uh, soaps and decorations. That's something I have to keep in mind when I'm using colorants too. And I really try to go minimal on my colorants and additives. But if you're using heavy colorants, you may end up with um, that same color. It won't stain your skin, but you'll, you'll definitely see it. So at this point, I'm gonna incorporate this. My next step will be to pour it into the mold. And pretty much as soon as I get it into the mold, I am gonna hit the end button here and I get it hustled out into the freezer. So I let my soap sit in the freezer for about 24 hours. I take them out, let them thaw just slightly, remove them from the molds, peel the plastic back off of them and let them sit there for a day or two. Because my soaps, the olive oil tends to be a relatively soft soap initially. And so if I try and cut it after the first day or two, it's almost like, um, ice cream cake maybe? Maybe a thawing ice cream cake? And so I want to let it harden up just a little bit so that it maintains uh, its texture and that I'm not doing, like, uh, like I'm not destroying my loaf as I cut it. So this is really all there is to soap making. You can see it's not necessarily a super fast process, but it's not painstaking. It's not overly complicated. This is something you could do at home. Um, really is something that I enjoy so and it's something that you can constantly tweak you can add all sorts of cool colors and fragrances you can really play with it there's all sorts of fun silicone molds so I've got different holidays like I've got Easter bunnies and hearts and I found a unicorn mold which I was super excited about I've got a whole bunch of silicone molds I've got kind of a silicone mold addiction although I use this bar mold more often than I do any other uh, mold but I seriously love the different shapes it's just it's fun so make this fun so and then I'll show you guys here in just a second what this looks like as far as the pudding consistency when I pour it into the mold and again if you guys are looking for my recipe it is on our Etsy store oh I also wanted to bring up Tara's living on a dime uh, she has a fantastic soaping course and I'll put an affiliate link for it too in the description uh, she is just a master of soaking. I particularly like her troubleshooting section in there. And when my friend asked about doing hot process soap, I was totally unfamiliar with it. So we went to Tara's book, walked us through step by step by step. We had no questions, no concerns. We made some not as beautiful a soap as what I make cold process, but we made some really fantastic soap. <laughs> And the 
you don't necessarily even have to put it into the freezer. That's just something that I do to try and avoid gel phase and to keep my soap as white as possible. If that's not your end goal, you do not have to put it into the freezer. You can just pour it into your mold and let it sit and it's gonna thicken up. So let's see here. So again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Really, if you're looking for an in-depth, comprehensive guide as far as how to make soap, I highly recommend Tara's course. Again, that's in the description. Can you guys see how thick that is? to do this while looking away. Okay. And so in theory, at this point, there should be no lye remnants. There should be no oil remnants. It should be soap. And so don't be fearful. If you do get this on your skin, even at this point, it's not gonna kill you just go and rinse off. So it's not quite thick enough for me to do my fancy swirls. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it into the freezer for a few minutes and then I'll come back and I like a really rustic looking bar. So I'll rough up the edges of it here on top. It is a good idea at this point to knock your soap on the counter once or twice. And what that's gonna do is if you did get any air bubbles into it as you were mixing it, It'll just help bring them to the surface and settle your soap. So that's really all there is to it, guys. A little bit of time, a little bit of materials invested into it, and you could be making your own soaps. And I, I definitely didn't say this in the beginning, but you don't necessarily even have to use goat milk. You can use any type of milk. Store-bought milk would be just fine. You could use beer. You could use water. You could use wine. It's really soap making is limited only by your own imagination so i hope there was something of value in here i hope this was helpful i hope it was encouraging because my goal is definitely to empower and encourage you guys thanks for joining me and i'll talk to you soon check out the other videos in my lineup i'll see you later